week of my banishment, things got real interesting. For example, I was sitting on the bed one morning after Gideon had left with our breakfast dishes and I had the patio door open, enjoying the breeze. Next thing I know it, Monroe came leaping over my balcony, Dawid following closely behind him. Ah, I see he's taught you how to move like a spider as well, I told Dawid, who was all green. He nodded his head. Yeah, it's so cool. It's like you're flying. I nodded. We came to check on you, Monroe said, as both of the boys took his seat at the foot of the bed, picking up the controllers to getting his game counsel. My pop, the only one with this new attack force. It ain't even out yet. The dude that made it sent my dad a copy of it because my dad do security for him sometimes. Uh, so you boys came to check on me, huh? I asked their backs, both clicking away furiously at the controllers. Mm-hmm, Monroe said without looking up. Yeah, right, I thought to myself. But I was still glad to see them. I hadn't seen anybody but Gideon for the last few weeks. So it was safe to say I was ready for more confidence. So, what's been going on while I've been locked up here, I asked. My pops kicked Elena out, Monroe said. I stared at his white head, my mouth open. Wait, what? I got up and I paused the game. Hey! They both said, looking up at me as if I had just lost my mind. Just give me a minute, will you? I walked back to the bed and I sat down. So, what happened with Elena? Now that I had turned off the game, the boys was a wealth of information. Pops was questioning everybody about y'all escape, cause her story wasn't adding up. Yeah, Gideon made her come and sit down in front of all his men and tell what happened. She lied big time, Dawid said. She tried to convince Pop that you had seduced the guard and Dawid must have snuck into the guard room and turned off the cameras and that you robbed him. Mm. I thought back to the money I had got for Gideon's watches. He had not taken it away from me, and I still had it sitting in my drawer. Then Gideon asked me what happened. Dawid shrugged, and I told him. Woo hoo, Morrow said. You should have seen me. My pop got so mad, man, I thought he was going to snap old girl's neck. He told Lee to take her up out of here. She can't even live in the village. Where did she go? Morrow shrugged. I don't know, but she better not show up here again. Wow. I was amazed. All this time I had thought when Gideon left his room and didn't go to the field, he was spending time with the mistress. When did this happen? I asked them. Right after he put you in chains, Dawi said. Wow. So, so what else happened? The boys filled me in on all I had missed, including the fact that Gideon ha had now made Dawid sit in class with Morrow, who was being homeschooled by the re a retired college professor, and that the boys were, even as we speak, in ditching class to check in on me. Hmm. I wanted to talk to Dawid alone, but I didn't get the chance. After they finished filling me in on all the details, they went back to playing the game. And would you know that that led to them having a full out fist fight right there in my room? Now, for the last few weeks, Gideon had come in for the evening every night complaining about them. He said he had never seen anything like it. One minute, they were inseparable. 
and the next they were trying to kill each other. He said one night that they had got to fighting in the kitchen while Ema screamed for them to stop at the top of her lungs. Anyway, they tore up her whole kitchen. Gideon had got so mad at them that he knocked both of their heads together and made them stand in the corner so that all his men could laugh at them. It was the darnest thing. One minute, they were fighting on the floor. And I mean fighting. Kicking and punching each other, slamming the other on the floor and around the room. I was super nervous because Monroe had those guns underneath his arm, just like his father. And any minute I expected him to pull one and try to shoot that weed. But he didn't. They just fought. And let me tell you, the time of Monroe just beating Dawid flat out was over. They were evenly matched, and I don't think either of them knew how to handle that. Anyway, so they're fighting on my floor. I'm pleading for them to stop. Then suddenly, Dawid steals, holds up his head. Monroe's fist, still posed midair, ready to throw his next punch, freezes and looks at him. What, he asks. Your dad's coming. Would you believe that those two rascals scrambled up off the floor, out the French doors, and just leaped over the balcony? I ran to the balcony to make sure that they were okay. I looked down just in time to see them leaping from the second balcony to the stairs, to the window, and then down to the ground, where they took off across the yard. I put my hand on my chest, turned around just in time to see Gideon walking in the room. He took in the ruffled sheets. Yes, Dawid had slammed Monroe head first across the bed. He took in his controllers and the paused game. He took in the chairs that were knocked over. The things that were spread out on the table. Cause yeah, you guessed it, Monroe had punched Dawid sent him flying into the table. My goodness. Then Gideon looked back at me. One eyebrow raised. Monroe and Dawi, he asked. I nodded. He shook his head. I swear I ain't never in my life seen nothing like it. Do you know them two jokers been teaming up against my man? Yet they argue about everything. He bent down to pick up a chair that was knocked over before sitting in it, putting the tray on the table. I smiled at him, glad to see him. I think I preferred his company to those young heathens any day. I climbed up in his lap. So, how was work? He chuckled. I had taken to calling the practice field and the drills him and his men constantly ran work. Tiring. And I think I'm ready to play hooky for the day. Yay! I said, clapping my hands together. What do you want to do? I don't know. I was thinking about going for a ride. Oh, be still, my beating heart. Oh, Gideon, don't tease me like that. He chuckled again. You want to go for a ride? I hopped up off his lap. I'll be ready in 10 minutes. I watched her disappear in the closet. She didn't even realize how much she's changed. A few weeks ago, all she did was hiss at me. Now, she smiles at me. And damn, that smile. I don't think my day will be right without it. I've learned so much about my little healer during our time together in this room. She's a giving person. When I come in tired, bruised, aching muscles, my little healer have me right as rain in minutes. She'll climb up into my lap and rub my neck and shoulders while telling me all about her day and how bored she was without me. See, I've discovered something about her. She has to help people in order to feel complete. I know that sounds wild, but it's true. She has to help people. So, over the last few weeks, it's just been me. And boy, if I could keep her tucked in here, I would. But, Safiya is like a deer. She got to be able to run free. However, I have really enjoyed having her complete attention. 
Do you know she even washes and braids my hair? She did something to my cuticle. I have no idea what. But amazingly, my nails look healthier. Hell, until she pointed out, I never even paid attention to my nails. She also lays her head on my chest and listens to my heart. The first time she did that, she made me promise to pick up a box of garlic pills from the store. And now she has me taking a garlic pill every day. I don't know why, but it makes her happy, so I do it. Another thing my little princess does that she probably don't even realize is she's taken to crawling up into my lap all the time. When we play chess, when we play video games, when we sit on the balcony to enjoy the night sky. Safiya Yah is a special girl, a daughter of Yah, a rarity. And I don't know why Yah saw fit to give her to the likes of me, but I, I ain't never letting her go. When I walked out of that bedroom door next to Gideon, I just inhaled a deep breath. Freedom never smelled so good. We went down to the kitchen, and as soon as I saw Ima, I ran to her. We embraced like we had seen each other in years. Safiya, yeah, look at you. You are so beautiful. How are you, dear? Ima, I miss you so much. How have you been? Have you been drinking your tea? Here, let me see your eyes. Gently, I pulled down her bottom lid, eyelid and smiled. Good job, Ima. Good job. I want to talk to you about your diet. Safiya, Ima cried with a smile on her face. Don't worry about me. We can talk about me later. How are you? I chuckled and did a little dance. I'm going for a ride. She nodded. I have packed you kids a lunch. She put a brown basket on the counter. My heart swelled. I turned to look at Gideon who leaned against the kitchen door watching us. We're going on a picnic? I felt like I had won the lottery. He smiled, nodding. Yay! <laughs> After I hugged Ima goodbye, Gideon grabbed our picnic basket and opened the back door. However, my enthusiasm died a little when I saw that we were headed for the stable. I didn't say nothing right away, cause maybe he kept like bikes in there or something. Just because we were going to the stables, didn't mean we were going to take one of those big beasts in there he called horses. However, I knew I was out of luck because when we rounded the corner, one of the state stable staff stood out there right in front holding a brown horse that didn't look too threatening. But standing next to it was a big black monster of a horse. When he saw Gideon, he began to raise his big head. He let out a greeting that made Gideon chuckle. Hey there, boy. I miss you too, Gideon said, walking up to the monster, patting his neck and head. You ready to stretch it out, man? He asked the horse. And would y'all believe that beast nodded his head? Um, Gideon, I asked, giving both horses plenty of space. Where's your car? Oh, we don't need no car, baby. Where we going, the car can't take us. We need to go on horseback. I frown. That's not going to work. Here, hook this to the saddle. He told the stable man, handing him the picnic basket. Before he came to stand in front of me, the big black wolf following behind him. Don't tell me you're afraid of these little horses. I looked at him like he was crazy. Little horse? Man, I'm from Chicago. We ain't got no horses in Chicago. That's all the better. Now you can try something new. But I don't want to try anything new. I like, I like routine. He stood shaking his head at me as if I had just uttered blasphemy from my lips. Routine? Princess Sita. We can have none of that. 
Today is a day of discovery. No routine. Then he put his hands around my waist and lifted me up. Way up to sit on top of the brown horse. Whoa! It moved. I clutched Gideon's arms trying to come back into them and off this horse. Gideon, please, I'm a fall. He chuckled. No, you're not. Just sit straight up. Back straight. I did. Find your balance with the horse. Her name is Tulip. Talk to her. Here. He took my hand, put it on Tulip's muscled neck. Rub her. Let her know how beautiful she is. When she moves, you move with her. You and Tulip are one now. So relax. If you tense up, you're going to make Tulip tense up. I nodded trying to do what he said, but I was terrified. Using one hand on the saddle, he just leaped on top of that monster. Heck, he ma that horse made Tulip look like a pony. What's your horse's name? I asked him. Black, he said, picking up my reins. Black? He looked at me with a smile on his face. What's wrong with Black? The same thing that's wrong with Wolf. He looked down at the wolf that sat on the ground next to Black. What's wrong with Wolf? I shook my head. You sure did put a lot of thought into those names. He smiled, nodding, as he tapped a finger against his head. That's cause I'm a deep brother. I was about to say, yeah, right. But right then he started moving and he was holding the reins of my horse. So Tulip started moving as well. I clutched the saddle for dear life. You tensing up, he told me. I'm not, I told him, but that was a lie. If I got any tensor, I was gonna shatter. Remember, you move with her. Feel her steps. Let your hips move with her steps. I looked at Gideon's posture and I mirrored it. And surprisingly, it got a little better, but just a little. However, the beauties of the surrounding mountains and the river stole away my attention from the fear I felt. Gideon said he was taking me to his favorite place when he was a kid. He said it was his very own paradise. And oh man, he wasn't lying. What do you think? He asked as he lifted me down off my horse. It's amazing, I told him. Y'all, I had never seen anything so beautiful. Slowly I turned, taking in the beauty surrounding me. The trees and the plants, the flowers, several things began to light up for me. I walked to a vine that had orange flowers growing from it. As I picked it, it glowed in my palm. I put the flower in my mouth and ate it. It was good. I picked another one. When I turned to Gideon, he was staring at me as if I had gone crazy. I walked up to him and I have held the flower to his lips. He shook his head. Ah, oh, come on, don't be a big baby, eat it. Slowly, he opened his mouth. I put the flower between his lips. As he chewed, his frown disappeared. Wow, it kind of tastes like cantaloupe. I nodded. How often do you eat flowers? He asked. All the time. I eat seeds, roots, leaves, even some grasses. You know what? I poisoned myself three times. The frown was back on his face. You gonna tell me that after you just fed me some strange flour? I chuckled. Don't worry. I've learned my lesson since then. He wrapped his arms around my waist, pulling me closer. Oh yeah? What were you doing wrong then? Well, I only eat things now that light up for me. He looked thoughtful. Now when you say light up, what do you mean? Well, it's like the plant or herb or root or seed, whatever it is that I need at the moment, it, it, like, it highlights, you know, in the order that I need it. How do you think that is possible, he asked. I chuckled, lifting my hands to gently rub the back of his neck. Well, the same way it's possible for you to lift a car or punch a metal garbage can across an alley. Yeah. 
He leaned his forehead against mine. Yeah, I can understand why he gave you such a gift. But why me? That's a good question. You got to pray for the answer. He'll give it to you. He nodded. Come on, I want to show you something. He took my hand and led me through the trees. When we came out of the clearing, we were standing before a huge mountain. He turned to look at me. Do you trust me? I frowned as I thought about that. Did I trust the man that kidnapped me? Taking me out of my comfort zone, away from my father? Forcing me to, to depend only on him? Did I trust him? Well, the truth was I did. <laughs> yeah, I totally and completely trusted him. I nodded. He stooped down in front of me. Get on my back. Giggling, I did. He was going to give me a piggyback ride. He stood and walked to the foot of the mountain. Hold on tight, baby. I squeaked in surprise when he began to climb straight up the mountain. With me on his back, I tightened my grip. My heart began to accelerate, beat as, beat as if it was going to beat out of my chest. Oh man, what a rush. The higher we went, the more the wind blew at my dress and locks, whipping them to wrap around his body. I looked at our shadow that was cast larger than life over the trees below us. There's something about him climbing this mountain, carrying me on his back. My hair and dress wrapped around his big body was completely and utterly breathtaking. It was an image I would never forget. This image would always be seared in my mind. The trees got smaller the higher we got. Y'all, we were so far up. His powerful muscles flexed as he climbed this mountain as if he had done it a thousand times before. When we got to the top, he put me on my feet. I can't begin to explain the adrenaline rush that shot through my veins. Up here, I felt so close to Yah. I opened my arms, holding my head back, and I thanked the Father as tears came from my eyes. It was hard for me to catch my breath as an overwhelming need to thank Yah washed over me. I looked at Gideon through tears. It's, it's, he smiled, nodding his head. I know, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling, ain't it? I nodded, still unable to speak. But this is nothing. You trust me, right? I nodded again. And then, y'all, he ran towards me, wrapping one of his arms around my waist, lifting me off the ground. Then it seemed as if he just flew over the side of the mountain. A scream stuck in my throat as his other hand grabbed onto a rope that I had no idea was there. Then he ran around the side of the mountain before he leaped to another rope that swung us even lower. He ran around the side of the mountain before he leaped to another rope. He did this until we reached the bottom. This time when he put me on my feet, I had so much adrenaline pumping through my, me that the only thing I could do was hold my head back and let out that scream that had been stuck in my throat. Then I turned to look at him, his own body pulsating with adrenaline as he watched me breathing heavily. Y'all, I was a changed woman, forever changed. Gideon, I said, slowly approaching him. My body still vibrating from the rush it had just experienced. Make love to me.